So the topic for today will be on rusting. So let's look at the learning standard first. So students should be able to describe the metal corrosion process as a redox reaction through activities. And number two, to experiment uh, to prevent rusting. So first, let's look at the process of rusting. So what is rusting? So what is the definition of rusting actually? So when we say rusting, so rusting is a chemical process that occurs when iron is exposed to oxygen and water, which undergoes a redox reaction. So rusting is actually a redox reaction. As we know, when iron rusts, a layer of reddish brown iron oxide is formed on the metal surface that is easily cracked and permeable. So rusting occurs and damages the structure of the iron. So let's uh, continue from there. So what about corrosion? Let's look at corrosion. So what do you mean by corrosion? So corrosion will be a process where metal is a redox reaction that metal is oxidized spontaneously when the metal atom releases electrons. So that is corrosion and it's different from uh, what we say as rusting. So normally rusting is a term used for iron whereas corrosion will be term used for metals now in the textbook we have parts where activities students need to know uh, corrosion of metal that occurs for example on copper and iron so let's look at the activity so this activity shows do copper and iron undergo corrosion so this is uh, apparatus setup. So you have sodium chloride uh, solution, potassium chloride solution, and of course sodium hydroxide solution. So what is the function of this solution in the experiment of the corrosion? So when you take a closer look here, so we have uh, what we call as sodium hydroxide. So sodium hydroxide is actually two test the presence of copper 2 ions and iron 2 ions. So this is related to uh, salt in chapter six, uh, chapter 6 in Form 4. So how about sodium chloride and potassium chloride? So sodium chloride and potassium chloride, the function, uh, those are electrolytes. So electrolytes allow the movement of ions and electrons. Now, what happens during corrosion? So copper metal will give out or donate two electrons to form copper two ions. Whereas iron, ferrum, Fe will also give away two electrons to form Fe2+. So at the first stage, we detect the presence of iron 2 where we can notice a greenish color forming in the solution itself. Now. Next, let's look at the effects of other metals on rusting. So now let's look at rusting and what happens when we have iron called with different metals. So different metal here means metals that are more uh, reactive or what we say as electropositive and metals who are less electropositive. So we have a setup of apparatus where we have hot agar in the agar solution we put in phenolphthalein and potassium hexyl cyanoferrate 3 now what is the purpose of us adding potassium hexyl cyanoferrate 3 is to detect the presence of iron 2 meaning that if there is rusting there will be a uh, observation of blue color in the agar solution Whereas, what is the function of phenolphthalein? So, phenolphthalein, the function is to detect the presence of hydroxide ion. So, the presence of hydroxide ion um, changes the agar solution to pink, from colorless to pink, which indicates no rusting. So, no rusting because when there is presence of hydroxide ion, the hydroxide ion doesn't combine with the iron 2 ion because there is no iron 2. So, the phenolphthalein detects the presence of hydroxide ion and in that sense, it turns to pink color. Now, let's move on. So, 
Metals that are more electropositive, for example, magnesium and zinc. So if we look at their standard electric potential, the value of the standard electric potential of magnesium and zinc will be more negative compared to the value of iron. So this metal prevents the um, iron from rusting. So what we notice in the agar solution is the metal that is called uh, coiled up with iron, which is magnesium and zinc, it will turn pink color. Whereas, if the iron is coiled with tin and copper, it will turn to blue. So, blue indicates rust, whereas pink indicates no rust. So, for example, here, uh, we have a diagram. So, a diagram here shows magnesium coiled in um, iron. So, what we can notice here is pink color. So, this pink indicates no rust. Okay, why? Because uh, metal, which is more electropositive than iron, which is magnesium, prevents rusting. So, we do not find any iron 2 uh, form in the agar solution. Now, let's move on to the next one. So, what if there is rusting? For example, here we have iron called with copper so when you coil uh, a metal uh, sorry when you call iron with a less electropositive metal for example copper in that sense so what happens is the iron will rust so why because this metal is less electropositive than the iron so in that sense if we talk about the standard electric potential the standard electric potential of iron is more negative compared to the standard electric potential of copper. So that's why you notice a uh, blue color forming in the agar solution. So conclusion, let's recap about rusting. So when we talk about rusting, what happens? We have the four processes, okay, the four process of rusting. So number one, iron will change to iron two, then the electron is transferred to uh, oxygen and hydroxide ion is formed then once hydroxide ion is formed it will combine with iron 2 to form iron 2 hydroxide so this iron 2 hydroxide is green but it will further undergo oxidation with oxygen to form a brown uh, solid which is um, iron 3 oxide so this is called your rust